In this video, we will be discussing the ETHO 126 regarding the installation, basic operation, and some minor troubleshooting. Let's go ahead and mount the unit to the wall. Use the template to plot the three holes for the mounting screws on the wall. Mount vertically on a flat surface, i.e. a board or wall larger than the unit itself. Make sure the heater is secure by utilizing a stud or the provided wall anchors. Keep away from any potential splashing or leaking water and strong magnetic fields. Use a level for proper alignment. Place the heaters on the screw and push down to lock into position. We are now ready to make our plumbing connections. We use one half inch MPT on both the inlet and the outlet fittings, which can be found on the sides of the unit. The cold water inlet is on the right side. It should be preceded by a high pressure discharge valve and a shutoff valve in that order. The hot water outlet is on the left side and runs to your hot water source. Never use PVC or on the hot water outlet. Instead, use CPVC or other heat rated materials. In this case, I am using heat braided steel braided hose for both the inlet and the outlet. Run water through the heater for a few minutes to purge all the air from the system. Shut it off at the faucet to pressurize the system, and at this point, check for and fix any leaks. If there are no leaks present, then let's move on to the next step. The power wires and ground come into the unit from the lower right hand side of the heater. Murray requests you to supply the power with a double pole 60 amp breaker as well as the use of a proper rated plug and socket which is able to supply 60 amp with 240 volts. The recommended wire size is 6 gauge for supplying power from a 60 amp breaker and for your ground wire. Turn on the breaker to allow power to the heater. At this point, the standby light should be the only light that illuminates. Twist the knob clockwise to the 28 amp position. When you turn on the hot water faucet, the heater will activate upon water flow. There is a slight delay when the water is first turned on. Wait about 5 seconds and you can see the two SCR lights illuminate. The lights indicate the power sent from the elements. The slower they blink, the less power is being demanded of the heater. The faster they blink, the more power. Adjust between the 28 amp setting and the max setting and you can see what I mean. Always test the water to prevent scalds and enjoy endless hot water. Every once in a while, one or both of your SCR lights may be off when water is supplied and it should be heating but is not. First, check the settings and make sure the heater is set to the correct setting. If the problem persists, remove the front cover. You will need to take out the two screws at the bottom of the heater to remove the cover.
If you look at the right hand side of the heater, you will see the PCB with the three lights on it. These three lights correspond to the triax that is directly across from it. The triax are like gates for the power, opening and closing according to the power need. If a triax fails, the light next to it will not illuminate. On the lower settings, or if the temperature needs to be regulated down, then not all the triax may need to be on. So when checking the lights for the triax, do so at maximum power. If you see the lights on and there is no hot water being produced, then our next step will be to test the power circuit. In this shot, you can see a brief description of the power circuits and where to check for connectivity.